Our business is, in the last financials we released, a $27 billion revenue run rate business, growing 46% year over year. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty decent sized business. And yet, I would argue that we're still in the early stages of the meat of enterprise and public sector adoption in the U.S. Outside the U.S., I think we're 12 to 36 months behind, depending on the country and the industry. So there's obviously... 12 to 36 months. 12 to 36 months. That's not as far behind as I would have expected to hear you say, say, a year or two ago. Yeah. Are they moving it, forward more yeah, rapidly? Lots of countries have made incredible progress over the last um, you know, year or two. Um, but, you know, it's still... Because the technology is actually so easy to use and so easy to experiment with and then actually... Um, build applications on top of what you're seeing is um, companies often start with dev and test but more and more what you see is virtually all the new applications being built today that don't have legacy that don't have dependencies are being built from the get-go on top of the cloud to enjoy all the benefits of the cloud right away and in the early days, those were mostly web applications. And we still see a lot of web applications as new applications, but increasingly what you see is that there are applications that use machine learning. There are applications that are taking advantage of devices on the edge and capturing all that information from those devices and doing analytics and then you know, reprogramming that device to take action or analytics capabilities. And so, um, you, you know, you can't have a business the size of ours without a large amount of production workloads, uh, but I still think it's still relatively early days. And he continues to try to push and press Amazon's advantage in the cloud thus far. Look for more news on custom chips that they're building based on what they already know customers are doing in the cloud. That should lower the cost of the workload, and they can pass that along to customers and perhaps uh, do pricing better than the likes of Microsoft. That's their hope. Also, database coming up in the 11. Uh, he, he takes on Oracle and uh, some of the claims that Larry Ellison made at Open World about Amazon and why he thinks Oracle's model of the database is uh, is one of the past. Of course, that's what he would say. They're still spending enormous amounts of money at Amazon, right? I mean, in terms of the data centers and how much money they're putting into this effort, John? Uh, how much Amazon is spending on AWS? Yes. Oh, uh, they are, uh, and it's growing quickly. Uh, you heard him say 46% year over year. The investment in artificial intelligence is interesting because if they can get customers to adopt that, then they're in the cloud deep, right? The very way that the, uh, the enterprise itself, the customer is getting smarter in its business is dependent on Amazon's cloud and kind of programming to that. So that's why a lot of these uh, different cloud providers are trying to get their customers in deeper on AI. 5G, any opportunity for them there as that sort of begins to develop as well on the edge of the network is where all the computing power is? Uh, somewhat in that for all of these devices on the edge, like your ring doorbell uh, cameras that Amazon, Amazon purchased, owns. yes, um, in order to, to really get the best advantage out of AI in the cloud, you need that Internet of Things sending lots of data into the cloud, unstructured in some cases, and the enterprise needs to be able to get smarter off it. So, you know, presumably as 5G continues to roll out, you end up with more devices at the edge, and more, more data. data coming into the cloud. How do you manage that? Uh, how, how do you get smarter about it more quickly than your competitor? Well. Amazon's going to argue it's on their cloud because their AI is better. Microsoft will have a different argument.